Hey guys, John here. Uh, I'm going to do a video today that's a little off of the norm. Uh, it's going to be kind of long because I'm doing it as we're as I go along and I'm going to do a multiple stage shot. If you've ever done a planned shot that uses multiple zooms, you know those can take a little while to set up. So this video may take a while, but there's a lot of things I want to show you in it anyway. A lot of tips, a lot of tricks, but there's three primary things that I want to accomplish. One is here recently I've got a lot of credit for the 3D spheres that uh, the community's kind of grown fond of over the past month because of a tutorial I did on kaleidoscopes. Basically what they did is they took the patterns out of the back of, the, uh, out of the back of my tutorial, stretched them out and created these spheres, which that's, that, that's fine. The math that's in there, the techniques all work. To do that, that's not what I had in mind. I wanted to do kaleidoscopes, which are a totally different animal than what the spheres are, but that, that, that's fine. These things are great. But to earn a little bit of the credit, I thought I would do three things. One is I'm going to show you how to take this monster, which is what I'm seeing around the web most of, which is, like I said, one of my templates that's just been stretched to work as a sphere. But I mean, it does real good. That's kind of a cool effect. Uh, but I can take this and I can make it this. All right? And I'm going to give you the template for making this. This is cut out of a 12 by 12 piece of acrylic. And it has a very similar effect. It's just not near as big. Okay? This is easier <laughs> than this other one. Okay? So I'm going to show you that. All right? kind of defer some credit. I'm going to show you how to mount those. That's one of the things I want to show you. And the other thing I want to do is a lot of these shots are starting to look exactly the same. I mean, I could probably go through the past month just on my Facebook feed alone and make a 30 minute flash video of all these different spheres and it all, it just, it's just identical. So I'm going to give you a technique. I'm going to show you a technique here they can kind of break that up. To me, this is not the art. This is a tool. To me, all these spheres looking identical would be the same as taking the unicorn, sitting there and holding it like this, go change its collar, hold it like this again. That's, that's not what it's about. We're artists. We're painters. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some stuff that may help you out with that. All right, now back here behind me, what I've got is I've got one of my light stands with one of my studio lights turned up. And what my goal is, what I'm going to try to achieve today, is I'm going to set that sphere up to where it looks like it's part of this bowl. It'd be about the same distance if you had a model standing here with their hands like this and you put the sphere in their hands. Okay? So I'm going to kind of show you how to treat the, the scope a little bit differently and use it more as a light painting tool instead of a light painting base. Okay? Uh, the equipment that I'm using it's not going to be anything fancy. I've got an old T3i here that actually dropped on the concrete and busted the viewfinder on. The LCD and the rest of it works fine, so I'm going to use this body. The lens I'm using is an old kit lens. It's a 18-55 Canon. Nothing special about that. Now, a little tip I want to show you. Notice this little rubber band I've got on here. Like I said, we're going to do multiple zoom. Maybe even multiple focus. I don't think I'm going to reach infinity in my garage here. So, uh, so I'll be adjusting both focus and zoom. And what the rubber band is, I take the rubber band, I tie a little knot in it, and I push that knot as far to one side as I can get it. Okay, tighten it up. And then I ring it around the lens. Now, this lens, it's really hard to do the focus ring, so bear with me a second. Normally I'd do this on the tripod so I wouldn't drop my darn lens. But I'm going to try to get it on there to where it will hold. Like I said, this video may take a while with all the little ins and outs that I want to do. Okay, now here's the purpose of these rubber bands. Notice how right now they're lined up. Well, if I took my first shot and I set it up to where I was in, I had the right zoom, I had the right focus, I could take these little knots, line them up on the rings, right? I could come back to set my second shot, and regardless of 
the adjustments I had made to get the first shot right, I just bring my line, my dots, my little knots, back in line with my lens, and that gives me my second shot. We're working at night, we can't see all this stuff. This is just a handy little way of getting a multi-phase shot uh, settings correct. All right, now to mount our spheres, this is our, yeah, our scopes, if you notice on the bottom of this here, I took some box tape and I've taped a metal plate onto it. And here I've got a magnet, pick up at the hardware store, it's just a round magnet with a quarter or 20 coupler hooked to it and screwed together with a quarter 20 half inch long Allen, Allen screw. And I've ground the top of the Allen head off so it's below the magnet. And that's how I mount my scopes. Okay, so now I can just take this, hook it onto my tripod, and it'll work just fine. I can undo this and put it on uh, one of the uh, little accordion uh, mounts that you see. It's got the little clamps that hook onto your stand. Several ways you can use this magnet. The quarter 20 is the standard thread on the bottom of our cameras that we actually set up to our tripod. That's a quarter 20 thread there. So this will mount directly on anything that the camera will mount to. So will this magnetic head. An easy way to hold up your gear so you're not trying to hold it by hand. All right, now I've got right here my little travel pod. I usually use my lightest weight pod to mount my uh, scope on. I'm just gonna slide him in here, lock him down, lock the magnet down. And now I can set my scope on here. Like I said, it's pretty stout. You know, the magnet itself is pretty stout. Oh. Yeah, it's holding it up by itself. So it'll definitely hold your scope. And if you build these out of glass, you want to make sure that that scope's on there. You don't want to just be able to bump it and knock it off. All right, so the little magnetic head mount, that's it's in the tutorial. If you go to uh, lightpainters.com, look in the, uh, it's one of the last pages on the, the tutorial before you get to the attachments. It, it talks about this, this mount clip. All right, then we'll bring this other camera pod forward. And now I've mentioned that I was going to give you the template for making these smalls. Now let me, let me show you, I'm going to show you a little bit of a comparison on some of this stuff before I get started with the actual setup. All right, like I said, you've got this big beast here that has a very nice sphere in it. I've got another one here that's got a sphere that doesn't, it's not quite as busy. You see all the little plates, that's because of the length of this. Inside my kaleidoscope tutorial, it talks about compounded reflections. And because this is so long, you're getting a lot of reflections in it, and every reflection compounds onto the sphere. Where this one's not near as long, you don't have near as many compounded reflections. If you're going to use your uh, if you're going to use your cell phone or a tablet or whatever in the back of the scope to decorate the sphere, then having the fewer panels gives you a better view of that, whatever that vision was or that image was. Now, I will tell you this, using the tablets or an image, if you're going to use an image on the back of these things, the acrylics are not the way to go. Um, what happens there is the, the image that's through the center of it will be nice and sharp and clean just like it is when you're looking at your tablet but all the reflections are going to be a little faded, a little fuzzy. The acrylic mirror is just not the quality of reflection. Now using the scope as a light painting tool without an image then the acrylics really work out very well. Matter of fact some of the haze, some of the fuzz that's in it can actually, it's kind of like diffusing the edge of a light blade so the acrylics are fine if you're using this as a brush. If you're using it to replicate an image though, you're gonna be very disappointed in the, in the quality, in the outcome of your shot. All right, now one thing I do wanna show you here on these. Now these are part of the 12 by 12 template that I'm about to show you. Both are, I mean, they're identical size as far as the mouse of them go. But height wise, this one's about three quarters of an inch shorter than this other one. Now what that is, if, depending on what lens you're using, um, if, you, if your scope or your 
illusion is too big, you'll have to pull your scope away from your lens and then you end up seeing this ridge. So you may want a smaller scope for it to sit down for your particular lens. So you start out with a little bit longer. Like I said, these are box taped together. These are not, I don't glue my triangles. So you can start out by cutting just one inch off the tip of it. That leaves this half inch wide and put them all together and you get this size sphere where by cutting an extra three quarters the sphere increases its size by that much. Let's see side by side if I can get them both in there. Yeah kind of but you can see the difference in the sphere size and that's just by cutting the height off of the back tip. Now cutting the face off won't fix it. It won't adjust it any at all. All that does is lessens the amount of space you have for your lens to go in. Alright on the far end as these taper down what happens is your lights bouncing back and forth and it gets real tight down here on the end and that's what the illusion is that's where it comes from if you've ever looked in a mirror with a mirror behind you and you've seen a million of yourselves what's happening here because these are at a sloped angle it's doing this trick it's having the same mirror reflection effect as a mirror front and behind you but because it's sloped it falls off and that falls off falling off is what gives you that curvature Okay, so anyway, that's what causes the illusion. This is the size you can break your scope down to and still get a lens well inside of it. Now, normally when I'm shooting, I'm shooting with a 77 millimeter ring, both my 2470 and my 1116. They're a little bit bigger, they're three inches across, and they'll fit in here pretty well. There's just not a lot of playroom. This little kit lens, on the other hand, there's all kind of space in here for me to angle it off so that inside the frame the sphere can be up in the corner it can be in the center down at the bottom I have a lot more placement options because I can wiggle it around without it seeing the edge of the scope alright so that's that little trick now before I mess around and forget let me go ahead and show you this template now I've cut this I've done this out of just a little piece of paper and hopefully you can see all the lines but what this is is this is a 12 by 12 piece just like you can order or you can go buy at a craft shop a 12 by 12 plate of either glass or acrylic. All right. And what I've done here is I've divided it into four sections. Okay. So there's three lines here. So I've got one, two, three, four blocks that are three inches apart. So three, six, nine, and then you're outside 12. You just simply go, let me turn it up this way so I can make a W out of it. You start in your top corner. You draw a line down to your three inch mark. You come back up to your six inch mark, back down again to your nine inch, and then back up again to your edge. And this is where you cut it out. You have one triangle here, one triangle here, and a triangle here. Now, once you get them all cut, I suggest you stack them on top of each other before you cut the tips off of them. Uh, reason being is you want those triangles to be as uniform as you can get them. Once you get them all squared up, if you'll notice down here at the bottom of each one, I've come up one inch and drew a line. This is where I'll cut the bottom off of. From here to here is a half inch. Just kind of coincidental that the one inch makes a half inch. You know, you have that 50% ratio. But you want to cut one inch off of every piece of glass. Now, if, you, if you're cutting acrylic and you're doing it with a table saw or something like that, you have to take into consideration the thickness of your blade. On your templates, when you draw it out on the glass, when you draw it out on the glass, what you'll want to do is you'll want to run your saw blade, or you'll want to run that, have this line dead center of your saw blade, so you're taking even amounts off both sides. If you go to the outside of this one, and the outside of this one, and go to the outside either way of this, then your shape's going to be off. You have to actually run the blade down the center of that line, or have that center line going down the center of your blade. To compensate for that eight inch thick blade that you're running it through. If you're scribing and breaking it's not an issue because the scribe is thinner than what the pencil mark is and it will it will snap along that line if you're good at breaking. Now I'm not going to show any of that. The reason being is the glass is sharp, the acrylic sharp. If you're doing if you're scribing acrylic usually it's done with a razor blade or another sharp very sharp tool you'll cut your hand if you want to learn how to cut on your own, then that's good. If not, you can take this template 
a 12 by 12 with a W drawn on it to somebody that does know how to cut it and get all three pieces of your triangle out. All right, and then you'll have a scope that's this small. Uh, when you, uh, and like I said before, whenever you start off, I would start off just cutting an inch off the end of it, giving you this half inch space. Try it on the lens that you're planning on shooting most of the time and kind of see what it looks like. I use variable lenses. If you're shooting prime, you know, if what you see is what you're going to get. If you're shooting variable, when you look into it, if it's too big, you might want to zoom out on it, you know, back off on it a little bit and see if somewhere within your focal range it doesn't work real good. My 11 to 16, this is the perfect uh, scope for it. All right? If I jump up to my 2470, then this scope that's three quarter inches shorter is too big. I have to pull it away from my lens. You know, I've got it up here tight against this lens on my video camera, but if I pull it back, I start seeing the edge of my scope and I don't really want to do that. Where this small one, you know, it gives me a better perspective. I can kind of zoom away a little bit. In fact, I'll do that just so you can see. So I can zoom into it and still place it kind of where I want it without seeing the edges. Well, when I'm doing my light paintings, I want that option. I want to be able to move it around and I want to be able to size it to the perspective that I'm after. And that's why I start this way. So 12 by 12 piece, cut a W, cut one inch of the tip off of it, and start there. Get you a cut, take a couple of pieces of box tape, tape the corners, make the shape enough where you can hold it together, shoot your lens through it, see how that comes out. If you like it, do a little bit better tape job or hot glue it, however you want to bind it together. Uh, like I said, I leave these transparent. You can get clear hot glue and, and hot glue it. will hold it a little bit better, but I always tape my edges even if I hot glue them. And box tape works real good. Now it's going to be a little flimsy, so if you go with glass, the any of the glass products you want to secure them the best you can. It's not going to help you if you drop it, but you know you, the little bit of movement has a tendency to chip them. So you want it as stable as it can get with glass. With acrylic, it's a lot more forgiving. I usually just use the box tape. So if I decide I get tired of it, I can cut it open, pull the tape off of it, and use the glass for something else. Right. Anyway, so there's your template. So you got your template. I've showed you the head to how to mount it. And like I said, that's also in the PDF. So if you didn't quite understand all of it, you can print off the PDF, take it to a lumber yard, and they'll get you the parts you need to put that together. All right, so we've got our mount. We've got all that. I guess now we can set up our shot. Like I said, what this is, this is going to be a perspective shot. I want to have the uh, scope sitting directly in front of my camera. Now, I've not done this shot. I'm telling you right now, all I did was set my uh, light up back there. So this shot may not be worth a damn. I've got a lot of ambient light. So it may make kind of a fool out of me since I am in such terrible conditions. I mean, there's no lights on in here at all. All the lights you're seeing is coming through the windows. So I have really no control without taping off those windows. And y'all ain't worth all that mess. I can show you how the shot works and we'll get what we get. How's that? All right, anyway, I'm gonna get my camera set up here. If I can think of anything while we're talking or while I'm setting up, I'll talk about it. If not, you may have a little dead time while I'm setting up my cameras or my camera. But anyway, now there is one thing that I can mention to you. These scopes, you're not restricted to just the spheres. Um, I can take, there's a gentleman by the name of Justin that has a YouTube channel called uh, Make, Build, Modify. He actually does 3D holograms. He has a cube that he draws out on it. He don't really show you how to make it, but he actually give, provides a PDF for what's called a Dode uh, dodecahedron, which is basically a 3D model made out of pentagons. It's kind of a neat, it's kind of a neat little deal. Now I have some plans drawn up for light painters uh, that's going to do several of these polyhedrons. Um, I'm working on a few more before I actually release any of them. I'm going to release them all as one packet. 
and I'll put Justin's originals in there whenever I whenever I do get ready to uh, to share them. Uh, once I get this all set up, I'll let you know what my camera settings are. But first thing I want to do is I want to set up what's going to be my model shot. Okay, I would set this up just like I was going to shoot that. Uh, a uh, studio light there. Alright, I set my focus the way I want it. I get my perspective the way I want it. And a lot of times I'll even go ahead and take the shot because this is what I want to look good. Alright, uh, what I use the light brushes or the light painting tools for is to decorate my shot. I want the shot to be nice. Now, if I don't have a model and I'm using just light painting, what I'll do is I'll either put something here where I'm going to stand and do my light painting so I know that my light painting itself is in focus. I see a lot of really nice light paintings that are out of focus because they didn't preset where they were going to start working. So you've got all these nice lights, but they're not sharp. They're very fuzzy because they're out of focus. All right. A lot of us use wide-angle lenses that infinity is very close, so a lot of times it's not, a, a, not an issue. But infinity on a lens is not true focus at infinity. There's a little play by the manufacturer in this lens. So true infinity is infinity marked on the lens, backed off just a little bit for true, tight, clean focus. The best way to get the focus is, is have somebody sit here in the bright light where you've got flashlights point on them, focus your camera, and then go up and do all your stuff. Just mark the ground where you're going to paint. I've got little glow-in-the-dark stars I throw on the ground so I know about where I'm standing so that if I'm in focus when I'm doing my light painting. <laughs> if I have a model, it's definitely important. I don't want a model that's fuzzy because I don't care how pretty a paint job you do. If the center subject of your shot is out of focus, you've basically wasted your time. All right. So anyway, I'm setting in my focus here. Now I'm going to go ahead and zoom the camera in. Like I said, you're not going to see me a lot of the times. But what I really want you to see is I want you to be able to see what I'm working on. So you may hear me talk. You may see nothing but my back and shoulders. But it's what I'm telling you and what you can kind of see happening out here. That's what's important. I'll try to get out of the way the best I can. All right. I've got my camera set up for my shot, or for my second shot, or second part of my shot. So now I'm going to take my rubber bands and I'm going to line them up with the center of my uh, flash up here so that I know exactly where I want this shot to be on the second phase. Double check it, make sure I'm still in focus. I might even take the shot. Uh, I do have this on a slight delay so that it don't rock as I'm shooting. I do that whether I'm using a remote or not. I'll oftentimes use a two second delay just so that the camera quits moving from me pushing the trigger. Because again, having it focused, having it nice and clean, to me that's what makes a nice shot. Alright, my shot's looking pretty good. So I've got this exactly where I want it. I know where my settings are. Now I'll bring my scope into play. One thing you want to do whenever you're setting your, your scope up is you want to be able to remove it from view without touching the tripod or the camera because you don't want to mess that second phase shot up. All right. Now, another little trick, and I, hope so, I need to mention that, another little trick that I use is masking tape. All right. right now, I have that shot exactly the way I want it. So what I will do is if my indicator on the back of my uh, camera does not fit exactly what I'm shooting, I actually use masking tape. I take a little bit and I make a piece of masking tape with a corner. Oh, here we go, masking tape. And I just tear off a little bitty piece with a point on it. And I actually map out my subject. On the, in this case, I want to know where the outside edges are going to be. And masking tape will peel on and peel off without really messing up your lens any at all. You might have to 
wash it every once in a while. But I want to make sure I've got a good point so that I can see where I want to return this lens to. Alright, but also whenever I set my scope up, it's going to block my view. What these little points do is it tells me where to place that sphere. Okay, so I can bring this around here like this. Now I can put the pod in there. Again, I don't want to do anything with this pod that's going to bump the camera pod. I want to be able to do all of it. I want to be able to do take this part of the shot. I want to get it out of the way without interrupting this. Because if you move it, you've pretty well run what you started working on. Alright, now right here, I've got the scope, or I've got the sphere inside my two points. It's a little bit low, so I need to lift him up just a bit. And I want to keep him off my lens here. Like I said, I don't want to bump my camera in any way. I want it to stay exactly where it's at. I want to do all my adjustments free of interference. The sphere's about where I want him, but he looks a little small, so I'm going to zoom in. They said I've got my rubber bands that will tell me uh, where, I, where my second phase shot's going to be. My focus is nowhere near close enough with it being this close to me. Now, I'm rough guessing here, but I'll even go grab, let me go grab me a tape measure right quick. This long will take a second, because I'm out in my garage where all my tools are. And I'm going to measure the difference here. I've got between my camera and the center of my model, I've got 64 inches, so just over 5 feet. That sphere is about 14 inches away, so there definitely can be a, a focal, you know, a focus issue in between them. And since we shoot manual focus light painting, I have to know where all that stuff is, and I have to set that up for my shot. Okay? So now I've got my shot set up. I know that when I move this sphere, that that uh, my uh, studio light is going to be right inside this zone when I line these two knots up on my rubber band. I should be able to get my shot. Now it's just a matter of the lighting in the room. I've got to set the camera up so that it can handle this light. Now, if it's, if I was in a controlled environment, I would just set it on bulb and use a remote, but since I do have this ambient light, I'm going to try to tune the, uh, I'm going to try to tune the camera into my environment, all right? So I'm going to put this, let's see here, I want my f-stop, I'm going to crank that f-stop up to all the way up to f-25. I'm going to leave my ISOs at 100. <coughs> And now I'm going to set my timing on the time it out where I can get the best shot I can out of it, which is going to be bloody fast, I'm afraid. Let's see what that does. All right, it's good and dark, so let me check this here. ain't perfect. I would actually take a lot more time to set this up. But what I have on my shot, ISO is 100, F25. I'm going to do a one second shot, so that means I'm not going to get a bunch of time back here on this here at all. Actually, I won't get any time. Let me see if I can increase that in and see what it gives me. Because I do need some more time. I don't want to go grab a filter, but let's see what five seconds looks like. I know my lighting and the scope's going to have to be quick. Uh, that ain't terrible. I can give myself five seconds. I'm getting around there to it. All right. Because I really do want to kind of paint my model as well. All right. So this is going to be very fast. <laughs> five seconds may sound like a lot of time, but it's really not. All right. So I'm going to minimize my lighting. I'm just going to do the laser. I'm not going to do a bunch of colored lights. 
because I, I want to get some light back there on that. So let's see here. All right, we're just going to hit this with this light. All right. Like I said, this ain't going to be a pretty piece of art. I'm just showing you the method, right? All right, so here we go. Ready? Do one. Boom, I hit that. I move this. Align my rubber bands back. Ah, missed him. Okay, I'm going to have to be a lot faster than that. Because that didn't turn out all that whoopity do. I'll show you a close up of it. As a matter of fact, heck, I'll go ahead and do it. We're taking forever on this video anyway. Uh, you can see the sphere, but you can't really see much of the, the deal behind it. Actually, I don't need to have a lot of room here, do I? All I want you to see is the back of my camera, so I could actually focus just right in on it, couldn't I? Let's see if I can zoom in and it come out real clear. All right, now I have to reset. It won't take me that long to reset my sphere because I already have a good idea of where I want it. I'm going back in. Set up well where I want to center where my deal was. All right, that's pretty close. I'm gonna add a few more seconds to it, so you're probably gonna start seeing um, a lot of the background. But I'm already at f25 and ISO 100 without a filter, without throwing an ND filter on here. I don't know what else I could do without covering all those windows. And I ain't doing that. So anyway, now we got 10 seconds. That means this is gonna have to be extremely minimalizing. Let me see if I can get a flashlight would be better than that laser. Yeah, that'll work. Alright. Back him up just a little bit. Okay, you kind of come off the center. Perspective-wise, I got him about where my marks say that that is. I'm not moving my pod, my camera pod any, so we should be good to go there. I need to refocus. Now yeah, there, now he's focused in. Since I'm using flashlights, let's try to dump too. Try to get a little bit of character in it. Cause I want it to be very quick. All right, here we go. All right, there's a quick flash there. Move that out of the way. Readjust this. Okay. Eh. It's not horrible, horrible. It's not the best thing I've ever seen. Um, I might, in, from uh, Lightroom, I may go in. Just do a little sharpening, but I could make that work. Like I said, it's not a very... It's not the prettiest shot I've ever shot. Well, we're in horrid, horrid conditions in here as far as trying to light paint with it. But anyway, I hope you learned a little bit. Again, we've got, we've gone from this down to something like this. All right. And just to look at it, like I said, you can you can play around with different shapes or different sizes to kind of get the sphere you want for your particular gear. My suggestion, my main suggestion when you're cutting these out is leave it to a point and take a little bit of the tip off at a time until your pattern gets about the size you want for the gear you're using. Right. A single 12 by 12 inch piece Cut at a W will give you three different uh, triangles to build your scope out of if you want to build one that's this size. Now if you're building, you know, if you're getting adventurous, of course you're going to need more material. But that's alright too, you know. But uh, we got that all worked out. Uh, again, a steel plate and a magnetic head for mounting. That way your gear's secured. 
You know, you gotta worry about breaking nothing or bumping it and knocking it off. I mean, that takes a little bit. You always wanna be careful. But when you're working with your, when you've got your camera on the stand, you're wanting to be careful with that too, or you'll knock it over and bust it. No big deal. That's a pretty good way of securing it. Um, don't pigeonhole yourself into just taking that shot over and over and over and over again. Do some experimenting. Get some distance out here. Get playing with it. And, and you'll have fun with it. Anyway, that's it for today's tutorial. Um, if you really want to get into the science behind it and how to manipulate the angles, the lightpainters.com and their tutorials, it has my telescope PDF. It's a little nerdy, a little mathy, but I mean, I'm always available to answer questions, you know, so if you're studying on it and you run, you know, you get stumped by something, just feel free to ask. And the way I've built the thing, don't stop reading. If you get to a part that's, that just, that my wording wasn't right or I didn't put enough detail into, and you don't understand it, jump to the next section because any part of that tutorial can be applied to making your work a little bit different, a little bit more uh, fun to play around with. Uh, that's about it. Anyway, hope you all have fun. Look forward to hearing from you. See ya.